Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. In today's Nepi's analysis, I'm going to talk about a rather interesting company found on the ASX, XRF Scientific. And just based off that last word of their name, Scientific, we already know this is a technical based company. Maybe you can even say a scientific based company, which is absolutely true. There is an old saying that you should only invest in what you know or understand. And if most investors or all investors applied that philosophy, no one or very few people, investors, would be buying shares in XRF Scientific because they are quite technical based. And when I started my research on this company, I had to spend a fair bit of time just to wrap my head around the chemistry and their equipment they actually do you. So if that sort of thing is not for you, those sort of companies you want to stay well clear of, this may not be the video for you. But if you are interested in unique companies on the ASX, having a closer look at XRF Scientific and what they do might be a quite rewarding experience. For full disclosure purposes, I am not a shareholder of XRF Scientific. However, after doing research in this company, I am a little bit more interested in taking an even closer look at XRF Scientific and trying to understand whether this company is cyclical or not. And that's the main question I have around this company. Now, they do cater to the mining industry and the mining industry is definitely cyclical. And in fact, the worst years this company did experience was back in 2015-16, which was at the bottom of the mining cycle. So I do think there possibly is some cyclic cyclicality to XRF Scientific. And right now they're experiencing a pretty good period of time over the last five years because what's happening in the mining industry. So that's probably my main question about XRF Scientific. But this company has done really well over the past five years. We'll talk about that later in the video as well. But at this point in time, I'm not a shareholder, but I am looking closely at possibly thinking about taking a position in this company in the future. Now onto the science and what I understand about XRF Scientific. Now, XRF stands for X-ray fluorescence. And this is a way to analyze the composition of substances. So when a substance is bombarded with X-rays, some of those X-rays pass through the substance and some of those X-rays are absorbed. Now, those absorbed X-rays lead to interesting stuff like scattering, like Rayleigh scattering, Compton scattering, also the release of photons, electrons, and fluorescent X-rays. Before I go any further, I probably should thank Horiba Scientific because the last slide in this slide were taken from this website. And through this website, I did gain a little bit of a better understanding of XRF and X-ray fluorescent. Now, the reason why we might want to bombard a substance with X-rays is to understand the composition of the substance. I think that's called quantitative analysis. Now, different elements will behave uniquely different during this process. So there is a peak height for any element, and that peak height is directly related to the concentration of that element within the sampling volume. So using this technique, a company can understand whether there's some lead or gold or the amounts of lead, the amounts of gold in a particular substance. Now, this particular slide was taken from an extra XRF either presentation or from the website. And this just shows you the process they go through. So you get the sample, uh, the mineral or the material, you prepare a sample and then take that sample through a chemical analysis. Some of those chemical analysis techniques include XRF. And then there's also ICP, which I know nothing about, fire assay, which I know very little about, and photon assay, which I know very little about as well. I do believe XRF uses some of these techniques alongside XRF. Now, some of the minerals and materials you can use in this process are mostly those heavier elements like iron ore, gold, nickel, copper, aluminum or aluminium, bauxite, manganese, uranium. You also can put cement, steel, glass, ceramics through this particular process. They've also included lithium here. And some of the research I did look at said that this particular process is more useful for the heavier elements, hence uranium, gold, and iron ore, which is not a mineral, that's 
or element that's a mineral uh, and that's iron in the iron ore, but I'm getting a little bit, I'm rounding on a little bit now, but it's not as useful for lighter elements. So it is interesting they've included lithium here because lithium is one of the lighter elements. So keep that in mind. I could be completely wrong, but that's something I did read during my research. The current CEO of XRF is Vance Stanzanelli. And just by looking at that photo, he does seem quite young, although that photo could be quite old because he's been with XRF for about 13, almost 14 years. He was appointed the CFO in October 2009. And then he had a rapid rise up the ladder in XRF management because he was a, appointed the CEO, COO in January 2011 and then the CEO in August 2012. He was also appointed the managing director, director in February 2018. He currently has 700,000 fully paid ordinary shares, which amounts to just over $700,000. So not a lot of skin in the game, but that um, is probably enough. And the very fact that he's been with this company for about 14 years, he does seem quite young uh, looking at that photo. He might have some aspirations to stay with this company and just watch it grow. And I do like the stability within that management. I do like when there is a CEO who's been, who has been in that role for at least 10 years, because even though he might not have as many shares as I would like or hope for, I still think there is an invested in interest when it comes to the success of this company moving forward for Vance Stanzanelli. Now onto the quality of XRF Scientific. And as I become more and more risk averse, and I think as you do get older and older, you should become more risk averse. I am more willing to search higher and lower for quality or high quality companies and ignore lower quality companies. But a lot of times, the best time to own a company is when it transitions from low quality to high quality. And there is potential. That's exactly what's happening with XRF Scientific right now. I'm not sure I would classify this company as high quality just yet, just because of that potential that this company is a cyclical company. And when we do see a mining downturn, this company could suffer quite a bit. So just not quite willing at this point in time to classify this company as high quality. But I think if this company keeps moving its direction, it is moving. It has the potential to be a high quality company on the ASX. Now to the financial year 22 results, we'll also have a look at the half year results for financial year 23. Now I am recording this video right on close of trading on the ASX on Wednesday, the 1st of March, and the share price has finished at $1.07. So a little bit higher than what I've got here, but at $1.05, the market of XRF scientific is 144 million, which doesn't seem too much. So this would be classified as a small cap company on the ASX, but this is a profitable small cap company and not only a profitable, it is growing at a nice rate and we'll see that growth in revenue in the next few slides, maybe the next slide. But financial year 22 revenue, 40 million, profit of 6.1 million. And I would prefer the operating cash flow and free cash flow to be a little bit higher, but it is positive. Operating cash flow positive by 2.6 million and free cash flow positive 2.2 million. So the main thing here is this company is profitable and also uh, free cash flow positive. So they are generating cash in their operations, which means the management has more flexibility in deciding what to do with that cash that comes in through the operations. And that means dividends, potential acquisitions, those sort of things. In fact, the revenue history was the next slide. And this is science, XRF Scientific's revenue history going back to 2012. And it's sort of a tale of two halves here. So the period between 2012 and 2017, there was zero revenue growth for this company. In fact, you could argue with me, it may be successful, that revenue was heading down. In fact, revenue went from 25.7 million in 2012 to 21.5 million in 2017. And then in 2018, we started to see, well, maybe not we, but XRF started to see their revenue increase. In fact, revenue has almost doubled from 2017 to 2022, increasing from 21.5 million to 40 million. So my main argument about where this company is cyclical is around that 2015, 2017 period, which was a downside of sort of the 
the bottom of the mining cycle. And that's when XRF did see their lowest revenue. The other thing I've included here is gross margins. So gross margins were hovering around about 30 to 40 from 2012 to 2019. But gross margins have started to increase. And that's a good thing for this company. Shows they have a little bit of pricing power and maybe they are developing a competitive advantage as well. So I did calculate the compound annual growth in revenue over the past 10 five and three years. If you looked at over the past 10 years, not impressive revenue growth, only 4.4% per year. But over the past five years, 11.4%. And over the past three years, 10.8%. And that's a sort of revenue growth that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for above 10% per year. It doesn't have to be 10% every single year, but I'd like to see compound annual growth rate in revenue at least 10% over a five to 10 year period. And over the last five years, they've definitely achieved that number. Now on to the half year results. And these were pretty spectacular half year results and the market liked it as well. Share price has reached a, a long-term high, maybe an all-time high, I think. If I'll show you the weekly chart, the 10 year weekly chart. And if I remember correctly, share price right now is an all time high. And that actually makes this company attractive because, in my opinion, you want to buy companies where the share price is at an all time high because there's absolutely no resistance. And the share price has the potential to keep on going higher because of the lack of resistance. Anyway, on to the first half results for financial year 23. And these are impressive numbers. Revenue increased by almost 50% from 18.5 million to 27.1 million. More than likely, I'm going to say right now, now, their revenue for financial year 23 will be more than 50 million, a nice 25% increase at least from financial year 22. Profit before tax up 43%. Net profit after tax increased 34% from 2.8 million to 3.7 million. So things are still moving in the right direction for XRF. And this is the reason why the market is excited about this company right now. And remember when I said, because the company is operating cash flow, free cash flow positive, it gives the management of this company a lot of flexibility in deciding what to do with that extra cash. Do they spend that money on growth initiatives or do they give some of that money back to their shareholders as dividends? And XRF is a dividend paying company and they have been a dividend paying company through the last 10 years, but dividends were dropping from 2013 all the way through to 2017, because that was a weak period in their history or in their last 10 years of 10 years of history anyway. But dividends have been growing really nicely over the past five years. In fact, right now at 2.5 cents, the dividend yield is 2.4%. And the last time they paid, looks like they only pay one dividend a yield a year, which is on their full year results. And based off the half year results, and the expected pretty good numbers they're going to have in financial year 23, I would not be surprised to see the dividend rise to maybe three cent or three and a half cent for financial year 23. Now onto the quality of the company. So I do use quite a few things to understand whether a company is high quality or low quality. And one of the things I do use apart from revenue growth, so I really want to see that revenue growing, but there is a link between revenue growth, profit growth, and these two metrics I do look at, return on invested capital and return on equity. I do prefer return on invested capital uh, over return on equity, but return on equity seems to be more favored. Now, a couple of things I'm looking for here are pretty good numbers above 10. And I'm also looking at increasing returns on invested capital and increasing returns on equity over time. And for both of those facts, uh, they are pretty good for XRF Scientific. So return on invested capital, 14.3, and it's growing. So I've included the last five years here, and return on invested capital has grown from about four to 14. Now, if I include the 10-year history, it wouldn't look as quite as good between because between 2012 and 2018, return on invested capital actually dropped. And also return on equity at 16.5 is the sort of number you will be looking for in this type of company. So when you look at these quality metrics, you might be able to argue that XRF is turning into a high quality company. Now to some valuation metrics, some of these other things I do look at on occasion, P ratio 20.6, doesn't seem too high for a company growing quite nicely, but I do think there might be parts of the market who are quite unsure whether uh, this is a cyclical company or not a cyclical company. And they might be scared that when the tide turns against XRF, 
that's when the share price and the performance of the company might suffer a fair bit. And that's why the PE ratio is probably not as high as it could be. Price sales ratio three, price operating cash flow 38.9. I would like the operating cash flow and the free cash flow to be a little bit higher than they have recorded in the past few years. So it's probably one negative thing and or maybe another negative thing I do have against XRF Scientific. But I also did a reverse DCF based off the earnings per share. So that's looking at the profit. If I did a reverse DCF based off the operating cash flow or free cash flow, I would have got a higher number. But a reverse DCF is just looking at the growth a company would have to achieve to justify the current valuation. And that means earnings per share would have to grow at 12.1% over the next 10 years to, to justify the current valuation. And I think the company can do that. I probably would prefer that number to be, say, 5%. If I saw it as 5%, I definitely would say this company could achieve that sort of growth rate over a 10-year period. So a little bit of a, a margin of safety when you th you're talking about lower numbers. But at 12.1%, I think this company can achieve it. They've already achieved it in the first half of this particular financial year. Whether it can continue that momentum going, I think comes back to the point whether this company is cyclical or not and whether there's going to be a downturn in mining. That also plays a part as well. And if we take a look at the daily chart going back to October 2020, this is a beautiful looking chart. The sort of chart you want to see if you are a shareholder of a company. There's many periods of time when it did look like the, the, the uptrend in the share price was under threat back at the start of 2022 and around June of the same year where the share price was going down. But since about August, September of last year, share price has been moving up in a really nice uptrend. And again, at $1.07, the share price is at at least a 10-year high. So if things are moving in the right direction. The one thing I'd probably like to see or prefer to see is increasing volume as the share price keeps on going up. And the reason I'd like to see increasing volume is because that would be telling me that fund managers are taking positions in this company. And when fund managers get excited about a company and start buying on the mass, that is what that's what's going to be the callus for a movement in the share price and a probably a consistent move in the share price over a longer period of time. I plan to continue doing this series for a while yet, this NEPI's analysis series. And the next five companies I'll be looking at include Goodman and Centuria Industrial Property, CIP. Before I do a video on those two companies, I'm also going to do a video um, on REITs because I've never looked at REITs before and it's time I had a look at REITs. So in the first video I will release before doing videos on those two companies is probably going to be titled, What is a REIT? What are some things of to look for? I wouldn't absolutely classify Goodman Group as a REIT and I'll talk about that when I do the video on Goodman, but definitely Centuria Industrial or Industrial Property, CIP, is definitely a REIT. Also, have a look at Dicker Data. Uh, they released their half-year results and share price of that company has tumbled about 50% over the past year. Index, another company where I think there could be an argument that uh, they are transitioning from a low-quality company to a high-quality company. And just like XRF, I think Index might be cyclical. So when we do see a down, downturn in the mining industry or the mining sector, that's when potentially Index might be affected but index has been moving in the right direction just like xrf scientific and also be talking about macquarie because macquarie is almost a cult-like stock on the asx every single fund manager loves this company it seems like so i thought i'll have a look at macquarie because i've never had a look at macquarie back in the past and if you would like me to feature a company for the nepi's analysis series just Mention that company in the comment section of this video and I'll see what I'm able to do. doesn't necessarily mean I will do a video on this on that company. Preferably, I would like to do a video on a profitable company, not necessarily growing profitable company, but definitely profitable. Otherwise, if you have any questions about XRF Scientific, if you are very knowledgeable on X-ray fluorescence or any of the other uh, analysis techniques, I'd love to hear your opinion. Maybe I said something completely wrong in this video and I'd love to be corrected because that's how we learn from making mis by making mistakes and being corrected, being corrected nicely anyway. Um, so leave any comments, any thoughts, any questions in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs.
That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.